The word authority originates from author, meaning that the authority of any work stems from its creator. The author grants authority to their work. For us, it is evident who the author of the Bible is. 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 to 17 states that all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This passage clarifies that the Bible is the word and truth of God, serving as the guide for believers to be complete and fully equipped for good works. The authority of Scripture lies with the Holy Spirit, who is the author of the Bible. Therefore, God's authority is inherent in Scripture. The unique aspect of the Bible is that its author, the Holy Spirit, also enables readers to understand it. The Bible is a spiritual text and cannot be read like other books. The Holy Spirit allows us to grasp the spiritual truths of God. This explains why two people can read the same Bible passage and have vastly different experiences. Today, I want to highlight four thought-provoking Bible verses. Starting with Galatians 6 verse 7, Do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. This verse reminds us that God cannot be fooled, and individuals will face the consequences of their actions. These days, it's common and unfortunate to encounter individuals who claim to be God's children but are not. Some are so adept at pretending that they deceive everyone around them, appearing as children of God while they are wolves in sheep's clothing. God is telling such people that He knows them and the quality of their work in service to Him. It's easy to deceive people and receive their praise and applause, but God examines every heart and rewards each person according to what they have sown. You might be able to deceive me, making me believe you are a super saint, but you can't deceive God. In the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, we are enlightened to a terrifying reality, no sin can occur outside the vision of the Lord. We see in Genesis that when Adam and Eve sinned, it might have seemed like God was not there, but he was indeed watching. This is something we need to keep in mind, God is always watching, and you cannot mock him. Galatians 6 verse 7 says, Do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. It emphasizes that you can't deceive God. Whatever you sow, that is what you will reap. If you constantly harbor anger towards others and are rude, you can't expect to live a peaceful life. If you sow anger, you will not reap peace. You can't sow hate in others' lives and expect to harvest happiness. It's true what they say, we are today what we did yesterday, and we will be tomorrow what we do today. If you are unkind, you can expect unkindness in return. If you are merciful, you can expect others to be merciful to you. If you are generous, others will be generous to you. You cannot plant carrot seeds and expect to harvest tomatoes. This principle applies in both the physical and spiritual realms. God operates under the principle of forgiveness, we are forgiven as long as we forgive others. This is a law that cannot be bypassed. Hebrews 9 verse 27 is another striking Bible verse, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. This verse reminds us that the world we live in is temporary, what we see now will not last forever. God has appointed us to live once, and our days in this world are numbered. This verse emphasizes the importance of how we live our lives because it also highlights the judgment that follows after we die. We cannot afford to live carelessly or on our own terms. Psalm 90 verse 12 says, So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. We have this one life, and after it, there is judgment. The outcome of our eternity will be determined by how we live our lives here. Whether we neglect God's commands, take them lightly, or live as if we own ourselves, our actions will either be accounted as righteousness or condemnation. 
This is why we must be intentional about how we live. No one knows when Jesus will return or how long we have on this earth. Therefore, we should live each day for God's glory, with the Great Commission at the center of our lives. Our mantra should be to live with the consciousness of heaven in mind. Remembering that, God is a consuming fire, Hebrews 12 verse 29, will help us restrain ourselves from actions that are ungodly and unworthy of our faith. If we keep this scripture in mind, it will help us constantly evaluate and assess our Christian lives. When people hear that God is a consuming fire, they often imagine a strict, no-nonsense God who deals harshly with his subjects, allowing little room for mistakes before condemning them. This is incorrect. God is loving and kind, and he is referred to as Father because he loves us deeply and desires us to reflect his character. He is holy and expects his children to be holy as well. Because he is pure and holy, we must approach him with reverence and awe. While he is loving, it's important to recognize that he is also described as a consuming fire, Revelation 21 verse 3. Revelation 21 verse 3 describes a future vision where God's presence dwells among humanity. It speaks of a place, like heaven, where there are no worries or problems, where all needs are met. It's a place of indescribable beauty and glory. In this future reality, we will see God face to face after we have been transformed and freed from our mortal bodies. God will dwell among us, and we will be with him constantly, forever. At that time, we will reflect his likeness, and he will be our God while we are his beloved children. John also envisions a heavenly city descending to the new earth, described as the new Jerusalem. It symbolizes God's dwelling place among his saints, where his presence will be enjoyed eternally. This city is described as incredibly beautiful, akin to a bride adorned for her wedding day, which is one of the most beautiful and memorable moments in a person's life. Nothing can diminish the radiance of a bride on her wedding day, she shines as the central figure, the star of the occasion. Similarly, the new Jerusalem will descend in such splendor that all eyes will be captivated by its magnificence. In Revelation 21 verse 3, John portrays God's intimate relationship with his people in this glorious city. This verse illustrates the restoration of the Edenic experience, where God dwells among his people. In this new state of existence, there will be no separation between heaven and earth because God will be fully accessible to humanity. Our understanding of God will be complete, and we will know him as he truly is. He will be with us as our God, and we will intimately learn from him, love him, adore him, worship him, and serve him. This is what we eagerly anticipate, being in the presence of our God, our Lord, and our Savior. The Bible contains numerous verses that challenge and transform our perspectives on life.